Okay, so hands up, be honest, who here has heard the whole animation is a children's medium? Cartoons are just for kids. Whether it's hand-drawn or computer-generated, if it's animation, that means it's a kid's movie. <laughs> If you've ever gotten this like I have, you need to show them Cartoon Saloon. Actually, just show it to them anyway, no matter what they say. Watch it, share it, show it to everyone, show it to your friends, show it to your family, your parents, your pet ferret. The movies made by this animation studio are so underrated, and today I'm here to talk about it. Without spoilers, because <laughs> when I'm promoting movies like these, I really want you guys to actually go and watch the movie, so don't worry, I'm not going to be spoiling anything for you. Also, if you haven't noticed, I have a new mic. So just to clarify as well, Cartoon Saloon is not the name of a movie, it's the name of an animation studio based in Kilkenny, Ireland. To my knowledge, they've produced four feature-length animated movies over the past 12 years, and every single one of them has been a critically acclaimed success. I've heard people dub these guys as like Miyazaki, but Irish, and honestly, it's not hard to see why. Just look at some of these shots. The amount of detail, the use of colour, there is no scene in this movie where I couldn't just feel the hours and hours of genuine passion and dedication behind the artists who worked on this film. The art style itself is absolutely gorgeous, the animation is creative and inventive, some of the set designs are just... like, there are so many scenes in this where you could just pause and screenshot and, you know, just hang on the wall of your house or something like that because they look like they just come out of a painting. It's gorgeous. The shots that I just showed you are from their latest movie called Wolf Walkers, also set in Kilkenny. It tells the story of a young English girl named Robin who comes to a small town in Ireland with her father. I don't know why I feel the need to mention this, but her father is voiced by Sean Bean, and Sean Bean's voice is just so pleasant to listen to in this movie. The forest is brimming with real wolves. It's my job to hunt them down, not yours. And it also suits his character really well here, but anyway, completely random, moving on. The small town they move to borders a forest that's home to a pack of wolves, and Sean Bean has been hired to track down and fell these wolves because they've been interfering with the town's efforts to expand their farmland. There's been rumours that among the wolf pack are these sorts of supernatural beings called wolf walkers, basically humans who shapeshift into wolves under certain circumstances. I know everyone's thinking werewolves right now, but without going into spoiler territory, it's it's not quite the same. Just, just watch it. The villain of the story, to borrow a little bit from one of my friend's observations, he's kind of like the love child between Judge Frollo and Governor Ratcliffe. Tomorrow I will show them I have tamed you just as I will tame this land. They will have nothing to fear if they trust in the Lord's will. He's super fun to hate in this, and he also provides for some really great tension in all of the scenes that he's in, especially the climax of the movie. There are so many things that I could choose to talk about in this, like the story is beautiful, the characters and their relationships with one another feel real and motivated and engaging, the beginning sequence is just the right kind of unsettling but intriguing that makes you get invested to see more. This film is a masterpiece in so many ways, but the thing that stood out to me the most was just how creative the animation was. People tend to disparage animation even if they don't see it as a children's medium. People don't often give animation the same level of respect as they do other forms of media. And I do admit that Part of the problem is that a lot of animated movies don't utilise the medium to its fullest extent as a storytelling device. Because something that a lot of viewers and even animators sometimes forget is that there are things you can do with animation that you can't do with other forms of media. And Wolf Walkers is one of those gems that's like, no, animation is not just our aesthetic, it's the way we're going to tell this story. One of the things that's often underused in lazier or even just lower quality animated movies is the use of colour to convey emotion. Non-animated movies can play with colour, and to their credit, many do, but it's often a lot more difficult and probably also more expensive to accomplish the same effect. Animation gives you infinitely more freedom and precision and control over the background ambiance of a scene than live action would. And you can depict or exemplify sudden changes in mood or tone or affect much easier with the visual tools you have at hand. And there were multiple scenes in Wolfwalkers where you can see the animators do this and it works really well. 
And not just colour either, but even the aspect ratio occasionally changes to punctuate certain elements of a scene that they want you to pay attention to. There'll be moments where the edges of a shot will be visually cropped, like comic book style, whether it's to direct the viewer's focus, or to signal a sudden turn of events, or even convey a sense of claustrophobia during a tense, action-packed sequence. Not to mention the fluidity in the art style itself. Like, one of the first things you learn in the story is that as a wolf, you can hear things or smell things so that even with your eyes closed, you can still be acutely aware of your surroundings. The way they show that by having these wispy coloured tendrils that look like smoke emanating from the objects or creatures that a wolf can sense is really inventive, and it's not something you can easily replicate in a live action movie. Even the framing. Like, take a look at this shot where in the foreground you have the lush, untamed forest, clearly contrasted against the grey, austere town buildings looming grimly in the distance. Like, I hope I'm making myself clear, I'm not trying to be unfair or like, you know, I'm not trying to say that this couldn't have been made into a live action film. It's just that the ways in which the animators realised, you know, like the power of animation, the, the natural advantages that it had to offer, and the ways that they utilise those advantages to their fullest extent is just something that I don't see enough in animated movies, and I have nothing but massive amount of respect for them for it. Seriously, if you love animation, I cannot recommend this movie enough. Like, this movie will teach you or remind you, like, the reasons why you love animation so much. You know, it, it is a genuine work of art from start to finish. <laughs> Maeve, there's two of us now. <laughs> there's two of us now. The other movie that I also want to talk to you guys about today is another movie from Cartoon Saloon called The Breadwinner. This movie... This movie is definitely not for kids. Like, I, I... I wouldn't recommend, like, showing it to anyone under 10. Like, you know, maybe with parental supervision, but really... I don't know, it's... it's... it's a rough one. Here, let me tell you. It's a story about a girl who's trying to survive in Taliban-occupied Afghanistan. Yeah. It's, it's not a kid's movie. Uh, honestly, I, I would say just, just don't show it to anyone under 11. That's my guidance, okay? Like, even adults, to be honest, you know, I want to give fair warning. This movie does have a fair bit of, like, violent subtext and imagery. You know, it's set in a war and it doesn't really shy away from the way that women have experienced and continue to experience violent oppression and subjugation in Taliban-occupied regions. I mean, I will say that most of the violence is sort of off screen in the way that, you know, it pans away so that you don't really see it, but you can still hear it. So if violence or abuse, especially against women, or just, you know, wartime imagery and uh, oppression is anything that happens to hit close to home for you for any reason, just fair warning, like, this movie does delve into a lot of those themes and, you know, just, just saying, like, this might not be appropriate for everybody. It does get quite intense at times, I'm not gonna lie. But if you can stomach that, it's really good. It did have a lot of heavy themes in there, like I said, but I feel like it dealt with those themes with, like, the appropriate amount of respect and gravitas, if you will. And while it is absolutely gut-wrenching at some parts, it's also an incredibly powerful story about agency and courage and hope. You know, like, the light at the end of the tunnel. This movie came out three years before Wolfwalkers did, and the tone of the film is a lot more serious than Wolfwalkers, for obvious reasons. So you don't really get the same sort of experimentation with colour and style like you do in Wolfwalkers, which I do think is appropriate given the subject matter that they were delving into. There is one exception. Part of the story includes, um, like, there's like a, a story within a story element running through the entire film, and they do use a different art style for those parts, um, and I, I think it worked quite well. And the way that they actually managed to tie it all in to the climax of the movie was incredibly heartfelt and emotional. Compared to Wolfwalkers, this film is much more about the story, like as in the script, rather than, you know, visual animation, at least in my opinion. I personally love both movies, like, pretty much equally. It's, it's really hard to compare the two, it's kind of like apples and oranges. There are so many little details in this movie that I didn't even notice until I rewatched it. Like, the ways in which they hint at how things are or what's happening behind the scenes that brings so much more depth to the characters and the world that they're living in. My absolute favourite scene in this movie is like, it's gotta be this little short bit that's only about five seconds long. 
And okay, all right, here we go. We're going to get into like a mild spoiler territory here. You know, I'm going to try my best to speak about this as vaguely as I can. But if you absolutely want no spoilers whatsoever, uh, just skip to this timestamp, whatever it is. So you have this character who's really nasty and has been the main source of grief for this family. This poor little girl's family who's just trying to survive in this dark and terrifying new regime and like this character sort of personifies a lot of the radical tyranny that's taken over this place. He is at the same time both a product and an embodiment of these oppressive structures in like the worst possible way. And you spend most of the movie really hating his guts. And then there's this bit towards the end where it's like, it's not that you stop hating him or anything like that, but in five seconds you understand exactly what's driving him, what's motivating him to be the way he is. And it's not the fact that they've gone and done this that's impressive, you know, like, like the fact that they've gone and humanized a horrible character or contextualized his actions or even given you like a subtle hint of who the real villain is, right? Like none of that is, is especially impressive to me because, you know, movies do that all the time. What was really impressive to me was the fact that they managed to do this in, in less than 10 seconds and without any dialogue. That was all they needed in order to make you understand. Like, I was I was blown away. I'm sorry that I'm geeking out like so much over these guys, but Cartoon Saloon was another one of those studios that kind of got screwed over hard last year because of Corona. Like, Wolfwalkers was meant to get a theatrical release last year, you know, and then quarantine happened and all the cinemas were closing and I haven't really heard that much buzz about it. And it's a real shame because they genuinely deserve more love. I've also seen Song of the Sea. That one came out in 2014, and if you like Irish folklore, or just folklore in general, go watch that one as well. I will say it's not quite as good as either Breadwinner or Wolfwalkers, but it's still really well made and just gorgeous to look at, and definitely a joy to watch. The only one I haven't seen yet is The Secret of Cows, and it's on my list, I am gonna watch it. I've been told it's also really good, just not quite as good as their newer ones, you know. But it was like literally their first movie and they've only been perfecting their craft with every new release from what I can see. So yeah, go check out Wolfwalkers, Breadwinner, Cartoon Saloon in general. You know, give them some love because they really deserve it. Even if you're not like a huge fan of animation, which makes me wonder like why are you even watching my channel? But you know, <laughs> even if you don't particularly care for animation that much, or if you know someone who doesn't particularly care for animation that much, I would still recommend giving these movies a watch, especially Breadwinner. Like, if you care a lot about story, and I guess more adult themes and so on, and if you, or, or if someone you know, often gives animation a pass because they don't feel like they get enough of a kick in that aspect, check out Breadwinner. It's powerful and raw and thought-provoking and probably about as far from, like, I don't know, Cars or Boss Baby or something as you can get. I don't usually get emotional watching films, you know, in general, and this movie got me emotional. And if you already love animation, then these movies are just gonna, like, validate that love. You can tell from watching these films, like, scene by scene, just how much effort and passion and love the creators and animators put into the stories they tell. And honestly, Cartoon Saloon as a whole deserves a lot more recognition than they've gotten so far. Like, I know I'm kind of repeating myself right now, but just, you know, they've only made four movies, and out of those four, I've seen three, and I've genuinely enjoyed each one. And the two most recent ones were just straight-up masterpieces, in my opinion. I honestly can't wait to see what else they come up with. Like, whatever it is, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm already hyped. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, everyone. As usual, you know, let me know what you think of Wolf Walkers or Breadwinner, if you've seen them already or if you plan on seeing them or if you want to see any of the other Cartoon Saloon movies. Um, yeah, just let me know what you think and I'll, I guess I'll see you next time at Sneezy Reviews. Bye!